Hello everyone, you are watching skydy.com and I am Dr. Hamad Haider. Today we will be discussing the problems related to the elbow and we will be discussing the elbow deformities. First we will be moving on to the problem called as cubitus valgus. What is valgus? When we say valgus which actually means that the forearm is actually moving outwards. We will be discussing what are the different problems which can lead to cubitus valgus and what are the remedies for the cubitus valgus because ulnar nerve is passing just below the medial epicondyle and it can lead to tardy ulnar nerve palsy if, if it remains unchecked and the child is progressing to increasing angle of the cubitus valgus. Then we are moving on to the cubitus varus. When we call it varus, when the distal part of the forearm, the hand is actually moving inwards. We will also briefly discuss what exactly is a carrying angle and what it actually means to be uh, by carrying angle and what it is uh, the pathology which may be associated with increasing or decreasing carrying angle leading with to either the cubitus valgus or cubitus varus. From then onwards, we will moving on to the problem called as osteochondrous desiccants. As by the name it tells, osteo means bone, chondro means cartilage, itis means inflammation. It is actually kind of an inflammatory process which eventually leads to avascular necrosis of the bone which is the subchondral bone. It can affect different areas. In the elbow, it mainly affects the capitulum, but it can affect the distal humerus as well. Most common area of osteochondral desiccants is actually the knee, that is the uh, the medial condyle of the femur, especially the lateral part of the medial condyle of the femur. Other areas which can also get affected is actually the talus. So you can have the same problem which is the pathophysiology is almost the same but it can affect the elbow like in capitulum, knee where it can affect the medial condyle or in the talus as well. From then onwards, we will moving on to the problem which is more encountered actually in OPD clinics that is the stiffness of elbow. This may be due to post-traumatic, patient may have suffered from some form of a problem, eventually it kept, it was immobilized for any reasons and now patient may be complaining of this problem or it may be associated with generalized weakness and maybe osteoarthritic uh, problems or rheumatoid arthritis or it may be simply related to the heterotropic ossification or chronic regional pain syndrome. We will be discussing what is the pathophysiology, what is the management of the uh, stiffness of elbow moving right from the cursor after the operative procedures which can be done to relieve the patient of elbow stiffness so that a patient can carry his or her living uh, activities of daily living on a regular basis. From then onwards, we are moving on to the two important pathologies. One is the rheumatoid arthritis which actually affects the elbow more as compared to the osteoarthritis as well as the wrist as well as metacarpophalangeal joint and it's highly debilitating disease because it actually leads to periarticular osteopenia and it appears as of the lysis of the bone around the joint as well. From that we'll be dealing, uh, we'll be moving on to osteoarthritis of the elbow. As we're discussing disease around the elbow, we have to, it's actually incomplete to discuss elbow without mentioning osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis. We will be briefly discussing what are the signs, clinical features of the osteoarthritis around the elbow, what is the X-ray presentation and what is the treatment options and we will be briefly covering the uh, uh, total elbow arthroplasty as well which is now actually quite common especially in the case of rheumatoid as well as osteoarthritis of the elbow. So if you want to keep watching the videos related to orthopedics, go to scardia.com and visit the website and keep watching these videos related to orthopedics. Thank you very much. Keep watching scardia.com.